Hello everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Abella. I am the Director of Programs for the New York Tri-State at One Love and I am just waiting for our guests. There they are. All right. Here we go. Let me make sure I know how to do this. Waiting, waiting, waiting for Korshiana. Ah, hi. Hey. Hi, Korshiana. All right, one down, two to go. Yep. Let me see if I can. I am. We're waiting for Mary and Hypatia. Mary and Hypatia, if you are on request. Welcome everyone. We're gonna get started in just a minute. Corey, how's your day going so far? Pretty good. I just got home from work like literally 15 minutes ago, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pretty chill day, not gonna lie. It's been too crazy, so that's good. Yeah. And how you're you're in Austin, right? Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm calling from Brooklyn. Look at us doing this inter <laughs> intercontinental <Yeah>. communication. <laughs> what's the what's the weather like in Austin today? So like it started out being not that cold this morning, like sixty something, and like this whole week it'll be like sixty in the morning and seventy something by the afternoon. But today it got like colder all of a sudden, so it's been like fifty something. But I'm sure New York it gets way colder, so <laughs> you're probably like, but yeah, not too bad, not too bad. You know? We straight freakishly fifty as well today. So your cold was my high. Oh wow! Hey Mary, <laughs> how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Ah, uh, here we go. Now we have Hypatia. All right, Mary. Of course, Yana. Ah, yeah, we're all hey. together. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Well, we're just gonna jump right in. Uh, I'm so happy to see all of your gorgeous smiling faces. So I want to let you know that last year, One Love teamed up with the Allstate Foundation. Um, I'm getting some feedback. Are you guys hearing that or are we good? A little bit, but what? I bring you. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, sorry. Last year, One Love teamed up with the Allstate Foundation with one goal, to empower young LGBTQ plus and filmmakers of color. And this led to a national search for talented young filmmakers who could help us uplift and um, uplift underrepresented voices and create powerful stories. And so now, after a year of work, after that search, many applicants down to a few winners, few fellows, you guys are um, meeting two of the teams from many to two actually from many to four films. Um, and so after a year of really hard work, we are finally ready to launch those films, talk to our filmmakers. I could not be more excited to introduce you to two of the teams who created some really powerful work over the past year. So let's start with you, Mary. Can you just tell us a little bit about your film and the inspiration behind it? Yeah, for sure. So um, when I saw the fellowship, I knew immediately that I wanted to write a story about friendship. Because in my life, that's been the most important type of relationship. Because I went to boarding school really young. And when you're away from family, and like romance isn't like really on your mind. Um, it's your friends who really ground you. And at the same time, it's also your friends who really hurt you. Um, mm. so I knew that I wanted to write something about friendship. I at the time I was really obsessed with skateboarding um, and watching skating films. So when I had an opportunity to make a film, I was like, obviously I'm gonna make a skating film. Um, Cause I just thought that it like sounded really fun and I was trying it out. And then I decided to, so it's actually, it was like a struggle trying to decide whether or not to feature to um, like women or 
like young boys. And I decided the latter because when I was doing some research and looking at all the friendship films online and what movies were, what types of movies there were aimed at young people, um, most, there were, first off, there were very few movies about just friendship. But at the same hmm. time, among those movies, there were even fewer movies about male friendships. Um, hmm. And male friendships without like a romantic inclination or a female lead. Um, so I really wanted to add to that narrative and add some of my own experiences and infuse that into the story. Um, and at the same time, it was like a good challenge um, for me to write like young boys, um, like and young men characters. Um, so that's how it came to be. And yeah, I was just very grateful to have been a part of this and um, grateful to have made the film. And Mary, what's the name of your film? Yes, the name of my film is June and Jaden. Should have started with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. I love it. I love that you just you talk about what the film is about and and what compelled you to write it without even thinking of the name first. It kind of like really gives some nice context to it. But it's a really beautiful film called June and Jaden. And now we have the creators of a different film called Door 3. Different but similar, I think. It's some some similar themes in certain ways. And so, uh, Korshiana and Hypatia, welcome, welcome, welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about your film and the inspiration behind it? Yeah. Well, like I said, when we first saw the the um, posting for it, we kind of just started talking about how, again, kind of like what Mary was saying with friendships, we don't, um, we wanted, well, first of all, we wanted to make ca characters that were relatable and that who we you know that were, we can, you can relate to, but that were also a little bit flawed. And oh, mm -hmm. I lose my train of thought, I'm so sorry. But um, I'm sorry. I can jump in. I can jump in if that helps. <laughs> so yeah, I think some of the inspiration I will say, kind of echoing what Cortiana said, is like we got um, kind of word of the competition or the fellowship via um, Instagram ad. <laughs> and so um, after a couple of weeks of mulling over kind of the idea of writing this, um, of writing this story or bringing the story to life, um, some like recent events in Austin kind of really pushed that or pushed forward to the front of my mind, at least, that this is something that needed to be made. Um, and specifically, I guess, whenever it comes to, for me, whenever I'm writing um, characters that are relatable to me, I like to write Black queer characters. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was kind of like the starting point of like, how can we have this group of kind of Black queer um, friends just going throughout their day and trying to support them, support each other, show that they care, while also kind of having these moments where it's like, that wasn't that cool, but like maybe that was necessary and kind of having mm -hmm. um, characters that you can talk about and that you can kind of take home with you and ultimately love at the end of the day, even though they are deeply flawed. So I think that was kind of some of the inspiration um, behind just building out the world of Door 3 and being able to see, um, you know, Day, Emery, and Indigo come to life. I don't know if Cortana wants to add anything, but yeah. Yeah, you said that really well. I was like, I don't know where I was going with what I was saying. <laughs> no, but yes, what she, what, what they said. <laughs> Perfect. Um, something that came up for me while listening to both of you is that so much of your story is from lived experience. Mary, like what? I know at one level we talk a lot about romantic relationships, but we're also like we're we're really wanting healthy relationships across the board, romantic friends, whatever it is. And so, so much of your stories are coming from lived experience. I'm curious for both groups, and Mary, we can start with you. Um, you know, why do you think it's important for, I don't, I, I don't love the term diverse and underrepresented, but I think that's the, that's the language we have, right? So for diverse and upper-represented stories to be seen on screen, like, I guess, maybe, let me ask this question. Do you see the stories that you created as diverse and, under, and underrepresented? And if you do, why do you think that your story is important to be in the world? I do think so. Um, I think in many ways, first, like what we talked about earlier, how friendship stories aren't really featured that prominently. Um, and then obviously, you know, having an Asian male lead, who speaks Chinese to his mother on screen. Um, and just like, you know, POC characters living in the space 
and existing without necessarily having their race being brought up because it's ultimately it's not a film about their race it's a film about friendship they just happen to be poc characters which i think is really rare because you know when sometimes uh i, I think hollywood is doing a lot better now i think like there has been a major push for diversity and inclusion but oftentimes we find you know poc characters their entire story being revolved around their race, which is important. By the same time, it's also important for us to realize that these are people and to normalize our stories being told in a sphere where oh, we're not like minorities or like it's somebody different, but we are people who, you know, are going through things that everybody is going through. And I think it's important to have that normalized um, and it's important for people to be able to see their stories reflected on screen um, and just to recognize it because ultimately art reflects life and life reflects art. And I think that's mm -hmm. something that I've experienced a lot. Just being able to see your story and your identity being portrayed on screen is a really powerful thing. And I think it really impacts all of us, whether consciously or unconsciously. Um, so I think all of our stories, um, all of the films that have been made are... I do think underrepresented stories. Um, and I think they all bring something different to the table. And most of all, they just show, I hope they show people that um, there are reflections of all of our stories on yeah. screen that are not, you know, the white straight cis narrative that still does dominate Hollywood even right yeah. now. Yeah. And I love it. I think that's my, that was my intention behind like, kind of like the, the, the hesitancy around the words of diverse and underrepresented, because clearly, factually, yes, they are. But I love that it's like, yeah, but just because I'm telling a story that is under of people who are underrepresented doesn't mean that their their race has to be the central narrative of this story. Um, that representation matters doesn't have to be like, okay, so like, let's represent your struggle or let's represent like this one note about you. But I really appreciate what you have to say. Uh, Cortiana, what do you think about that? Definitely. I think our film, um, same thing, especially, well, one, we feature Black characters, queer characters, that right there, we don't see that a lot. And also, we don't get, the both of those groups, we don't see them just enjoying life often without the, mm -hmm. of something, of their, some sort of Black trauma or something that's going, or something involving them being queer as well. And I, that's why I think is, like I, I've said before, that I think that's the one of the relatable, most relatable parts about our film, and that I think we, we we've heard people talk about it, that we've heard a lot about. It. It's just that it's nice to see a group of friends. All of them are black, because I feel like a lot of times in Hollywood it'll be like maybe one of them is, black, you know, just so we get everybody to watch. You know, certainly not all three are black. Definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> and then yeah, just that they they have that up until you know whenever the serious stuff happens, they have that time to just be um, hanging out with their friends and and, and, be, and being themselves. And I think that that is what we don't get to see a lot. And I haven't really been, I don't wanna say it's like coming of age, but I think still the closest we, if I was gonna put it into a category of film, kind of maybe coming of age, and we don't see that a lot with black characters, period. And this, mm -hmm. especially in this age group too, cause they don't even though we haven't, we, they're not specified, but they're black youth, we don't see it a lot. So yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I'm like, I, I think I answered the question. I'm not. Yeah, you absolutely did. And I, I think everyone that I have spoken to who has been in the three, the first thing they comment on is the Black joy. Yeah. So thank you both for putting that in the world because that is certainly something that is underrepresented. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, speaking of Blackness, you know, we're in Black History Month and we're talking a lot about um all the spaces in which black people in particular, but people of color have made progress and the progress that needs to still happen. And I'm thinking, you know, you all as filmmakers and Hypatia, I'll start with you, like as a filmmaker, you know, what are, what are some of the barriers that a fellowship like the Allstate Foundation has really, um, you know, exists to, to counter for you and your and your lived experience is a is a fellowship like the Allstate Foundation really necessary or do you actually have all you need like you know if you have had like all you needed to make your three without the Allstate Foundation. Yeah, so I think um and Cortiana 
<laughs> has been a very faithful sidekick in all of my crazy filmmaking endeavors. And so maybe she can speak to this as well. But I am used to being a filmmaker that either has doesn't have resources or is calling in a whole bunch of different favors or yeah. is the person who is just like single handedly producer, director, writer, production. Like, you know, I'm I'm directing talent. I'm doing a uh, wardrobe. I'm doing all the different kind of aspects. And so this was kind of the first time, this was the first time, I will say that this was the first time that I was able to have kind of like a team of people inside of my brain to help me with the filmmaking process. And I say that in the sense of like, I remember on set, like there would be times where I'd be like, oh wait, aren't we supposed to be working on this thing? And I'd like run over to Sunitra and the Sunitra would be like, oh yeah, he's already doing that. And he's setting up the lighting for this and this is happening and oh, all these nice. things being orchestrated <laughs> around me. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then I'll like walk away and then be like, oh wait, do we have like the book? that we need for this next scene. And then the set director is like, or the set designer is like, oh yeah, it's right here. Like I'm, I was about to hand it over right now. So I, without this fellowship, that would not have been possible. Um, just having a, a production team that size, that was by far the biggest production team I've ever had. Um, yeah, and just the biggest amount of support that I've ever had, you know, with a creative project that, you know, I, I enjoyed writing and, you know, trying to ideate around. It was nice to have kind of other cooks in the kitchen, even though, you know, some people um, don't feel the same way. It was just nice to not be there alone, you know, especially to have Cortiana as like a counterpart it was just another step to be like, oh, this is my right eye and I'm the left, you know. <laughs> so we're both oh, being, like, it, was really, it was a really great experience. So, yeah. Yeah, that and then just like the script when we first, when I made sure I first wrote it, it does not, it didn't look the way it does now. And like, so those, so I don't know if we, we have, no, I, I was about to fellowship, but all the like master classes we did and the people that um, revised and gave us notes on our scripts and our editing, like without them too, like without those other opinions, I, it, like I said, it, it would have been great, but it's even better because of those people that mm -hmm. like, cause I honestly, I mean, I've, I've made connections through, like I went to film school and everything, but the, the, they were people that were in the industry giving us that level of feedback. And then also just, you know, whenever we did something good, they'd be like that phrase to also just give a little something, something too. So that was also that another thing that the fellowship, we could have done it, but it wouldn't have been the same. And it would being a part of the fellowship definitely took it like to the next level for sure. Yeah. And for the people who don't know about the fellowship, so when we put out this call, this national call with the Outsta All State Foundation, the fellowship that um, these four teams secured for themselves was fifteen thousand dollars worth of funding to make their film, in addition to master classes in and screenwriting, in editing, um, in in post, right, in all of these different things of how to make a film. Um, so really taking you all who had raw talent, who were making beautiful work without a ton of resources. And we thought if we could just provide some resources and some support, what could these amazing people who are already doing amazing things, what more could they do? And you blessed us with the gift of Door 3 and Jude and Jaden. And so, Mary, I'm thinking like, you know, what are your thoughts on, on, filmmakers like yourself overcoming some of these barriers that are up against filmmakers of color or queer and or queer filmmakers? Um, I think fellowships like this definitely help a lot. Um, I think like, it's like really heartening to see a lot of, you know, different organizations and foundations starting fellowships for diverse filmmakers and artists. Um, because I agree with everything that Hypatia and Cortiana said. I think, you know, like, money is a big thing. First first off, money is a big thing. And oftentimes, like not always, but queer people of color have less of it, um, like institutionally and also when it comes specifically to filmmaking, um, there's just less of it. And without money, it is hard to do things. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, so the fellowship, $15,000 is a lot of money um, for a film. Um, so that's first of all, wonderful. And then all the master classes are just another layer to that because um, then you add on to the educational value of it. Um, and just it's like even more resources but apart from fellowships I think what I found is that um, working horizontally and collaborating hor horizontally mm -hmm. has, has been really really fantastic for me finding your people who share your vision um, who believe in you and who you believe in um, I think there's a lot of wonder to that and a lot of power in that um and i definitely couldn't have made june and jaden and i couldn't have made any of the films that i've made without like a team of people that i admire and respect who 
are willing and are interested and yearn to tell the same stories that I want to tell. Um, so I think that's a big thing because I think like collectively we're really powerful. Um, so it's important to just come together as artists and filmmakers. And despite all these barriers that the industry have, I think if we're determined to make art together, um, I think we can. I just think we can. Ah, oh, Mary, so good, so 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 good. Okay, so I want to I want to like kind of play there for a little bit and have you guys nerd out about your filmmakers, right? So let's talk about how you make a film. So <laughs> I will throw it out there. Any aspect of the 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 process from how do you write compelling characters? Um, maybe you want to talk about the actual shoot and how you decided. Both of you guys have very distinct aesthetic choices that you make in your films. They look very different from each other. So, you know, maybe you want to talk about that process and how you how you make aesthetic choices, or maybe you want to talk about post and what that was like. So just from, I think each, from each one of you, will you talk about either your favorite element of the process of making something, or maybe you want to talk about the most challenging part or the part that stretched you the most, you know, whatever, um, but would love to hear about the process from each of you. Who wants to go first? Because I feel like some of you are thinking, I don't want to, but yes. I'll go, but I'll lose it because I will yeah. So, <laughs> but, so I think I'll say character building, but not just in the, like, when we wrote the script and, oh, and Emery says this, blah, blah, blah. I think when we were dis deciding, like, oh, Day's color is red, like, Day is red, mm -hmm. and Emery is green, and Emery is playful, and Emery does this, 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 and Indigo is blue and purple, and, and how... We, and then from there, also, then when we started, when we cast finally, and then we had our first, like, Zoom table read thing that we had, and then we started talking about, like, we told them, of course, we were the directors, like, this is who Day is, this is who Emery is, this is who Indigo is, but them also bringing something to each of the characters was like, really, mm -hmm. in me personally, as a director, my favorite part is the performance part and the working with actors. So just those two elements, those two parts of, us creating the characters themselves. Cause I feel like this was the most in depth I've gone so far with, cause I've done small projects, but this is like my big one. So <laughs> this is the most I've, in depth I've gone with like creating characters before I brought them to like, the actors. And it was just really fun to see those two, those two ideas come together. And then the, the product, which was on screen and it came out so nice. Like the, again, like I said, the friendship part, I think is like the strongest core of the, and our characters are like the strongest part of the, and how they're written, of course, is the strongest part of our film. So that was, that was my favorite part personally. <laughs> I love that, thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can jump in right now. <laughs> I don't know if Mary has anything to say. Um, but I guess on the flip side of this, right, like uh, coming into this project, you know, I feel like Cortiana has a more traditional um, director background. I have more of a traditional writer background. Yeah. And so one thing with writing is that like, you can see things in your head but having to like communicate that not necessarily just through words in the script but like pulling inspiration from like different um tv shows and being like this is kind of the look that i want or this is kind of the visual aesthetic so kind of like being able to bring what was in my head to life but but like more of the technical aspects of it so like talking with the cinematographer and being like so how do you shoot that <laughs> or like what is that lens or like how how, like, is there a way that we can get a top shot right here? You know, just kind of like trying to figure out um, the choreography of the scenes in my head and how to put that into the, into the real world or just like into a completed project. I think that was one thing that I really enjoyed doing and just also like, just in general, ideating with other people and like other creatives and seeing what everyone else can bring to the table is something that um, I enjoy. And I think also really elevated the project to incorporate other uh, aspects other than just like Cortiana and mine's like brain ch children, kind of like figuring out what other, what other, the other creatives that were on set wanted, like even with the chalk and things like that, like a lot of, we, we gave a lot of creative freedom to everybody. And I think that was another thing that I, that was just like a joy to see because it really felt like we were just playing on a playground and then some dude just had a camera <laughs> and that was it. So yeah. Oh, I love that. That's really, really cool. Mary, what's going on in your head? What do you think? Um, yeah, so it's honestly really similar to Hypatia. I love, like, working with everyone. I, like, love, like, working with talented filmmakers. I think it's so fun. Um, I think my, the part I loved most is the same as the most challenging part, um, which was, like, the actually physically being on set. I don't know if any of you know this, 
but like we really like messed up the location situation so we like okay. went to the location and there were two skate parks with the same name and they gave us the permit for the wrong one so like we got there and there are these like 60 year old like skaters being like you can't come here you can't be here and then the police got involved and then we were like okay so then we like went to the other skate park um, and then there was like a group of skaters. There were like 15 of them and it was their friends sending away party. That was like the skate park they all grew up skating in. Oh no. So then they did not want to leave because they were like, this is the last time we're all going to skate in this place. Um, so at one point I was so stressed out. We we're all like, okay, what do we do? Literally my backup plan was to go to this like beach town that was like an like 30 minutes away and like changing it to like a skating on the beach type of movie um which i think would be hard to skate on sand it would have been hard but i was like in the <laughs> oceans like the waves it would be pretty um but it was it ended up being so great because we talked to the skater we like explained what this was we explained what one love was um and like what this story means to all of us and they were so understanding and so lovely and what we ended up doing was they would skate around as usual as we were setting up and as we i was like working with the actors and once we started rolling everybody stopped and it was like quiet on set and then after we finished the shot, everybody cheered. And I don't know, at that moment, I was like, wow, like, it is so wonderful. Like, filming is such, like, a bringing community thing. Like, everybody is coming together for these, even these random skater people that we didn't even know, uh, like, a day ago. So I think, like, at one point, I was literally euphoric. I was like, wow, this is so fun. This is so great. So I, I, mean, that story's awesome. I also hear, like, in that story, the power of a permit right like if you yes. you had your permit <laughs> and that's another thing about having a, a funded film where you have to do things by the book like you have to make sure you have your permits you that's have to make true. sure you're following COVID protocol you have to make sure all these things that might seem like come on I've been making films all like it, yeah. just like <laughs> on my own on just shooting them like renegade style like are you serious and yet that kind of structure allows you to have the moment that you had which was really really cool so my last question for you guys is kind of, Mary, you set it up really nicely, but I'll let you go first. Like you told those skaters like, hey, this is for one love and this is what they're about. And this is what this film means to us. I'm curious of having made this film, if it actually has affected the way that you guys go about relationship. Like you've been living and breathing these characters and these themes for a year. Has it, uh, has it, affected at all the way that you look at relationship or do you just treat everyone like trash now because you're like i was good for a year now <laughs> now i'm just gonna be crazy <laughs> um yeah i mean I, I think it's definitely changed how i've looked at relationships because especially because um, I drew from parts of my past into both June and Jaden. So I think I've been both at a certain point. Um, so really having to like not only write it, but like constantly revise the script and sit with the characters and then, you know, talk and, you know, go through the character psyche with my actors. I think I really had to process a lot of just what I've done in the past to friends and what has been done to me in the past from friends. So by doing that, um, I think I've like healed a lot surprisingly um, just from past experience, but also thought a lot about what I need to be doing moving forward so that I don't do what Jaden does to June. Um, and just, you know, like, I think it's definitely a balancing act and just this entire year or, since may i think since when it began it's just been a lot of reflecting um and self-reflecting which has definitely been re really helpful in my friendships and relationships yeah that's great thank you and i think for myself in regards to friendships it's like and i'm still learning this is a personal like thing that i have to get better at as i'm getting older but because in the film the whole thing is about them trying to figure out how they're going to talk today and, and bring and bring their concerns today and I think that and they eventually mm -hmm. find a way and I'm one of those people that I have a hard time just like 
expressing how I feel, to, especially if it's something that's uncomfortable in uncomfortable situations. I have a really hard time just talking to people, even if they are my friends and I know we're close. And sometimes it's even harder when we're close because it's like, this is somebody who's important to me. I don't want to say something. So I think that yeah. I'm, ho I'm hoping that since I'm working on the film and seeing how it plays out, I'm hoping that it helps me be better about saying something, speaking up, because honestly, it's with, with friendships and, I mean, it's more it's more beneficial to say something than to not because you never know what could happen what with your closed mouth. So I'm still learning the lesson, but definitely going forward, it's it's giving me something to think about in, when I'm in situation. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know building off of that, I think one thing about this script that personally was hard for me to write was that it was it was built off of personal experiences from all around. I think that there have been a lot of times where I've been in situations like this, whether I'm Day, the person who's like kind of in the situation, doesn't really know what to do, whether I'm Emery, like, hey, I really want to have this conversation. I don't know how to have it. Or whether I'm Indigo, where it's like, okay, this has been happening for so long that I almost feel not indifferent, but I feel in a position where I can't actually do anything. <laughs> so um, being able to pull from all of these kind of experiences and kind of have an outlet to, um, you know, express this and to also find out as people were like reading the script that it was like a, that everyone kind of had similar experiences one way or another. I think that has really kind of pushed me f towards having more conversations about relationships, especially the ones that I'm in, whether that's like platonic, familial, um, you know, romantic, things like that, just to kind of like be as like just to show up, make sure that I'm showing up in a relationship in the way that in a way that's not necessarily detrimental to other people. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of what this has done for me is just kind of given me um, not necessarily the language. I don't think that's it. I think it's given me kind of the opportunity to show someone this work and then have a dialogue afterwards and be like, so how did you feel about this? And kind of like have kind of a conversation starter even though it's not what it is but just to kind of have something to kind of convene around or something that could potentially reflect someone else someone else's experiences back to them to feel like they have something to share about them um so yeah I feel like I'm I try to be better at relationships more intentional now <laughs> I put flowers on walls now I don't know <laughs> you're a whole different person exactly a whole different so yeah well, I know that oftentimes when we are a mess, when we have a message to give to the world, it is often because we need to give that message to ourselves. And so I'm just really grateful for you all for the work that you guys have given us to do. And I'm really encouraged by the fact that you also are receiving and, and doing the work yourselves. Thank you for being incredibly talented filmmakers. Thank you for being in incredibly wonderful people and for spending some time with us. Uh, I want everyone to know that you have until February 28th to vote on the film that inspires you to have healthy relationships. And you can go to joinonelove.org yeah, forward slash vote in order to do that. And you can vote for all the films. You can vote for one today, um, another one tomorrow. If they all inspire you, you should spread that love. So again, it's joinonelove.org forward slash vote. And when you vote and you tag uh, One Love, you will be entered to win a wonderful One Love swag bag. So that is just another incentive to go and support these filmmakers. You're gonna to wanna to use the hashtag One Love Film Fest in your post. All right. Guys, thank you so much for your time um, and your talent. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. Good night, Bye. guys. Bye. Bye guys. How do I end the live? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs>